SmackDown vs. Raw 2011 was one of the greatest wrestling games ever. It was the end of the SVR series and what a way to go out. The road to WrestleManias were fun, Universe Mode was introduced, the weapon physics were amazing, all the creation you could possibly imagine, it was just special. So then in 2011, it was time to follow it up, but now there was no more SVR, there was no SmackDown, it was simply WWE 12. And I got this game the day it came out. I chose this over Modern Warfare 3 and it was so underwhelming. It was was so bad. I expected so much better. I was just disappointed. I don't know if it was because I would go on my friends list and see everyone playing Modern Warfare 3 and I would get salty or if I was expecting some groundbreaking changes because the name changed because it was a refresh but it just felt so average. That was 2011 though. Now in 2020 after playing this game again and looking back at it I must say this game is underrated and I was just way too hard on it. Now I know there's still some dumb stuff in this game. Trust me, it's far from perfect. For some reason, Booker T in this game is light skinned, but it's so much better than I remember it ever being. A lot of fans are mixed on this game. Some hate it, some love it, it's very polarizing. So let's see how this game is in 2020. How does it hold up? What's its legacy? What's good? What's bad? Let's take a look back at WWE 12. First up the soundtrack, I mean the one song. Yeah, there's literally one song in this game and it sounds like you're in some action thriller from 2004. Match types are all there from 2011, nothing was added, but that isn't a bad thing. By this point, they practically had every match you really wanted to play. The roster is also very solid. This game was the one where they really started adding some legends in there. After they disappeared in 09 and only had a few in 10 and 11, here we got Austin, Eddie Guerrero, Vader, Ricky Steamboat, Legion of Doom, Demolition, Arn Anderson, Kevin Nash, Booker T, kind of, and Edge. The roster has everyone you would expect from the time period, updated CM Punk, John Cena, Undertaker, Ray, Triple H, it's all there. But the one thing that pissed me off about this game is that they went a little too extra with the DLC. Batista, Shawn Michaels, The Rock, yo all three of them were in the game last year. All three. And now their DLC? Did Mr. Krabs take over THQ in 2011? What, why? Why would you do this? First of all, congratulations, Mr. Krabs. Hello, I like money. Luckily, my friend who actually bought the DLC back in the day let me download it. But really? Really? Macho Man returning was cool though. First time since 94 he was in a WWE game other than All Stars, which was the same year. At least they didn't make Brock Lesnar DLC. Yes, Brock Lesnar was back in a WWE game for the first time since 2003. And the coolest part was, this was when he was still under contract with the UFC. So this game came out in November of 2011. Brock Lesnar fought in December of 2011 in the UFC against Overeem. This was super cool and luckily he was an unlockable. Entrances as usual are perfect and once you start the match, that's when you realize, okay, this is kind of different. New camera, new lighting, new controls, new bugs of course, and first up the controls. The controls they implemented here I prefer so much more than the analog stick controls. Maybe it's just me, but wrestling games grappling with the analog stick just never felt right. Like if I'm playing 2k and I'm doing dribble moves with the right stick, yeah I get it, I need it, but grappling, come on, just give me a button. But that's just my opinion. So here it's back to the basics. Square is to punch, X is to grapple, and circle is to Irish whip. It's simple, it's compact, and it makes sense. The camera angles are cool, I can't lie. They wanted to replicate the real camera angles of WWE as much as they could, and they did well. Good thing the games don't try to do this these days to replicate the camera angles, cause um, uh, yeah, Kevin Dunn is a crackhead. In general, the game just feels more alive. When you do moves, the ring shakes, the ropes move, it just feels alive. There's a new feature that's super hit and miss. When a match starts and you start doing moves for your opponent, your opponent just doesn't die anymore right away after one move. Nah, now they sell the move but they get up right away so it keeps pacing nice and fast in the beginning, which is fine and dandy, a lovely addition to make it more realistic and fast paced and fun, but the issue is... The AI in this game is on something, because even after the beginning of the match, they get up so fast. No matter how dead they are, no matter how many moves you do, the AI always gets up. 
they no sell that shit like Prime Ultimate Warrior. Look at this. I'm out here going full Super Cena mode. But what's the point? Doesn't matter. They're gonna get up anyway. Steel cage matches where you gotta escape are impossible. Just stay down, old man. Stay down. This game also introduced breaking up moves previously seen on the GameCube games. And there are some cool things you can do in this game now, such as creating your own double team moves. You can't lie. This was a deadly combination. 619 and a 5 knuckle shuffle combined, come on, it's fire. At the end of the day, you gotta hand it to the game for introducing some cool features that are still there to this day. Limb targeting was brought in here, the comeback ability, which now seems so obvious, how could you not have something like comeback, but it was introduced here. We got wake up taunts, being Randy Orton and pounding the ring, being the viper as your opponent slowly gets up and then bang hitting the RKO was and still is one of the most satisfying things ever. Storing your finisher is back. And when you look at it, they did a lot of things for this game, which for some reason back in 2011, I didn't appreciate. I think it's because the SVR series was done, it was now a rebrand and a refresh, and I was expecting something insane, some total overhaul, some brand new life changing WWE game, which it wasn't. The gameplay isn't perfect though, there's glitches of course, the camera angles sometimes look amazing, but sometimes are just dumb, and the ropes are silly bands, and the AI doesn't stay down, hit detection is just dumb and simply doing moves just looks weird sometimes. Random teleportation happens. See that's the thing, with so many new additions, glitches were expected. So it's far, far from perfect. But playing this now, I can't hate on it that much because this game helped build 2K14. This set in motion like 90% of that game. You can see the inception of what Yuke's went on to build and even though it's rough here, it's not that bad. It's not like this. The thing about this game is, you can find better gameplay in other games that's more polished and better, the one that came before this, the ones that came after this, but this game does two things so well that it kind of makes you look past the gameplay a bit. As crazy as that sounds for a wrestling game, and those are the two game modes, Universe Mode and Road to Wrestlemania. Let's begin with Universe Mode. Universe Mode was introduced in 2011 and it was good, but 12 took the ball and ran with it. And it ran so far that 2K19 and 20 still can't catch up. This is the best universe mode of any WWE game. Don't at me, I don't care. Comment and rage, I, I don't care. This is it, this is the GOAT. Other games might have done a few things better, they might have more customization and whatever, but when it comes to the total package, shout out Lex Luger, this is the best. First up, compared to 2011, you can edit shows however you like. What belts are on what show, what logo, what arena, do you want Nitro on Mondays? Do it up man. You can edit pay per views as well. That's fine, that's cool, pretty basic and now we're used to it. But what makes this mode the GOAT is how smart the mode is and how unpredictable it is. The first time you start up universe mode, it's Monday Night Raw. You begin the show, you get the Raw intro, you get the pyro, entrances, it feels authentic. What a way to open up the show, Triple H vs The Miz. The match starts and you win your first match with whoever you selected and everything's fine, everything's dandy. And then guess what happens? Here comes the pain, Cole. Brock Lesnar runs out and demolishes you. And that's it. That's how you unlock Brock Lesnar. And it sets the stage perfectly for universe mode. First match, first show, and it's proof that anything can happen at any time. This game would use a cutscene whenever it felt like it. The entrance, pre-match, mid-match, post-match, it is the most unpredictable wrestling game I've ever played, but it's so smart too. It doesn't just throw in cutscenes to throw in cutscenes that don't make any sense, it always works out. So I was starting my universe mode and Brock attacks Triple H like you just saw. Life doesn't go on like nothing happened. Next week, Triple H takes on Brock Lesnar in a match, but to add a little spice, Randy is on commentary. So Brock wins pretty easily, welcome back Brock, what a win. So Brock is celebrating, and Randy slithers into the ring and hits Brock out of nowhere with the RKO, which was awesome, a really cool cutscene. And at this point, I was like, okay, so Randy is going to feud Brock, that's pretty cool. But nah, next week, it's a three-way. The game didn't just forget about Triple H, they remembered, and it always works out, it makes sense, it's a triple threat now. There are so many cutscenes, whether it's the main event, or a Divas match, or if you're Cody Rhodes in the mid card. Win a match with Cody, and since he's a heel, he tries to break his opponent's leg after the match with a chair. Typical heel maneuver, but we can't let that happen, so out comes his brother, Goldust, to stop him. 
And that's how you unlock Goldust. Oh look, it's Monday Night Raw, John Cena isn't in a feud yet, and he's versing Question Mark. I start it up, and it ends up being Axe from Demolition. Super random, but yo, why not? It didn't end up being a storyline match, but for a one-off, isn't that pretty cool? I was in a triple threat steel cage match, number one contenders match, Cena vs Triple H vs Shawn Michaels. The match starts and DX just looks at each other and claps me. I love it. Allies mean something, rivals mean something, and anything can happen at any time. You can now interfere in matches and decide who is going to win. The ref gets knocked out, you come in, do your finisher to one of them or hell both of them and you literally carry the ref and make him count. I was at the Royal Rumble and it was all good. I had just defended the world title and I was like okay this is cool, I had a fun match, on to the rumble match I go. But nope, Austin, 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 Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out and begins stomping a mud hole and raising hell and Michael Cole on commentary says, I just got word, Stone Cold Steve Austin is back. It's just so well made and what I like about this universe mode compared to the other universe modes now is, universe mode these days is like a hybrid GM mode where you run everything, you know everything, but there's no satisfaction you got in GM mode with the ratings and competition, it just becomes a playground for you, which is cool and some people love it, but I can't find that fun because 90% of the time you're the one who's planning everything out, but 12 feels like you're just dropped into the universe and shit is about to go down, anything can happen at any time, you're just along for the ride and it's awesome. In my universe mode CM Punk won the Royal Rumble and I was like okay that's pretty cool, he's probably gonna go on to verse the champion of his show and it's gonna be a fun time. And then next month I noticed at the Elimination Chamber, John Cena became WWE Champion and Randy returned the world title. Then the Raw after Elimination Chamber, it was Champion vs Champion, Cena vs Orton, Smackdown vs Raw. And the Rumble winner CM Punk came out and watched on commentary. And this blew my mind. You eventually control CM Punk and whoever you attack, that's who you take on at Wrestlemania in the main event for their championship. What a way to kick off that angle, like they gave you so much control and so much freedom and this is the game that came out in 2011, it blows my mind. And then CM Punk walked into Wrestlemania, had a classic with John Cena and became the WWE Champion. I could go on and on about how awesome this mode is, but you guys can just see it. Anything and everything can happen. They even have a draft, the night after Wrestlemania, every match is Smackdown vs Raw, one on one, winner gets a random draft pick, which could end up being something whatever or someone you can go on to push to the stars on your show. WWE 12 universe mode is without a doubt the greatest universe mode of all time, don't at me. It's just so well made, so deep, so unpredictable, it's such a complete mode. But that's not it, we got the last ever Road to Wrestlemania. This wasn't like the other years where you choose from storylines or wrestlers or whatever, nah here everything is a surprise and this is a straight movie. I remember playing this for the first time and the starting was so hype, I didn't know what to expect. All I see is THQ and Ukes present. And then you see John Cena getting ready, then you see his belt. You hear his Taker's theme in the background and you get the notion it's gonna be John Cena versus The Undertaker. Prime Cena versus Taker, not this. And I was so amped. Cena starts walking and now you control Cena. You're walking backstage, you're having a convo with security, you see Big Show tweaking, your music hits, you're heading out, the crowd is going nuts, you throw your hands in the air, pyro is everywhere for some reason, life is good and you're John Cena. How much better could it get and pang. Down goes Cena, plot twist right there, you ain't Cena, you're the bad guy, you're the villain, you're Sheamus. And I loved the whole road to Wrestlemania, it was so well made and so unique and once again the people at Ukes made better storylines than the real life creative ever could. So you're Sheamus and you basically take over the entire WWE, you're at bragging rights, it's Smackdown vs Raw, but nah, who cares about Raw, who cares about Smackdown, you form your own alliance, all hail the United Kingdom. I don't want to spoil this too much cause I'm gonna do a series on this whole road to Wrestlemania, but they just really hit it out of the park with this mode. And as the weeks go by, it just gets crazier and crazier, well because, uh, spoiler, listen I said no spoilers but how can I not mention this. The story ends with Sheamus holding every single title you could possibly imagine, 
all of them. It's like he went on a shopping spree at WWEShop.com. So that's how it ends, okay? And now, do you go to a select screen and choose the next story? Is there even a next story? Well, I told you, it's like a movie. So everything's fine with Sheamus, and then this happens. And now you're Triple H and you live your best life as you pretend it's 2003 and pull out the biggest shovel you can possibly imagine and bury the entire midcard in the game. But who cares, YOLO, it was beautiful. The storyline was hilarious because Miz becomes 2004 Kurt Angle and he even has Kane running around as his personal misfit. This game just reminds me how much I love The Miz. Of course, Triple H beats everyone, remains champion, and doesn't put anyone over and just leaves, but that gives you the perfect segue to what is the most beloved story in this game and one of the most beloved roads to WrestleManias ever, the hero story. Your own created wrestler story. You're Jacob Cass voiced by Austin Aries, you're an NXT rookie who just made it to Raw, and boy do they have a wild storyline for you. At first it's fine, it's normal, Ray is your buddy and he was your NXT pro, remember those, so he looks out for you. When you get beat up backstage every week, Ray is there to help you. But then the WWE gets turned upside down. Kevin Nash becomes the general manager of both Raw and SmackDown and decides that instead of a boring ass pay per view they have every month, they were going to do a Clash of Champions WCW tribute show on some ECW one night stand wave. So slowly but surely WCW legends are introduced, Arn Anderson, Road Warriors, Vader, Light Skin Booker T, and everyone just gets banged in. Jacob Cass gets banged in, Cena gets banged in, Ray gets banged in, and just like that, WCW is back, and WCW takes over the entire company. And that's the story, it's WWE versus WCW, and somehow Ukes made a better invasion storyline than the real life WWE ever could have. And they got nice and creative with it. Cody Rhodes leaves the company for WCW, which makes sense. His father was a WCW legend. Big Show goes back to WCW and, and WCW was just so overpowered. Undertaker got clapped, Cena got clapped, Ray gets clapped, everyone gets clapped. Look what they did to Ray, okay? Just look at this. Nice knowing you, Ray. GG. It's just a legendary story mode. It doesn't even end at WrestleMania. Yes, Road to WrestleMania doesn't end at WrestleMania, it ends at Starcade, and I don't think anyone is complaining. Oh, and by the way, it ends in a 6 on 6 Hell in a Cell War Games hybrid. Yeah, it's special. Top 3 wrestling game storyline of all time, and it might just be number 1. Please go and play this, you will not regret this. You get a total of 2 hours of cutscenes in Road to WrestleMania. That's a whole episode of SmackDown, including the commercials of just cutscenes. They put in so much effort in here, it's so you unique and it shows they just had fun with it whereas these days this is what we get a ladder match i've got a match for you my butt your face what are you two fart wads doing this table is reserved for wrestling team members only it sucks that road to wrestlemania is no more but what a way to go out you have the best universe mode you have arguably the best road to wrestlemania mode what more could you need and the creation from the past years is still there the creation we talked about in depth in 2010 and 2011 is all still here you can still make finishers and if universe mode and road to wrestlemania aren't enough for you hell make your own storylines this game is awesome trust me when I was getting ready to play this game again for this video, I didn't think I was ever going to say that. And now I'm just mad that I didn't appreciate this game more when it came out. Yeah, the gameplay is glitchy as hell sometimes, but it's still playable and that SVR 11 identity is still there. But the two modes of Universe Mode and Road to WrestleMania are just special. That now in 2020, 9 years later, I sat here having a blast. I played Universe Mode for 4 hours non-stop and then I was like, yeah, I think I definitely have enough footage. Let me calm down and I definitely recommend you go back and play this and see how you feel about it now You might be like me. You might have thought you hated this game But once you play it again, you're like Okay, I think I love this game. I really wish that when I first played this back in 2011, I got into universe mode more. I wish I paid more attention to the road to WrestleMania and really tried to understand what was going on, but instead I just kind of skimmed through it just to get the trophies. Like I didn't take it seriously, I barely even watched the cutscenes, I just never gave this game a fair chance back in the day. So I always thought it wasn't good, or I thought it was just an average WWE game, but looking back at it, this game is just underrated. I strongly recommend it.
please go back and check this one out. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts on this game? Anyone else have a similar story where back in the day you didn't care for it, went back and were surprised? Let me know below. Thank you guys for watching. It means a lot. Go follow the Instagram. Go follow the Twitter. Subscribe, like it, dislike it, do whatever you want. But stay tuned for more content coming soon. Thank you.